Hello everybody, Happy New Year, and welcome to January. Thanks for joining us today for Virtual Club Live. I'm Josh Peterson, we're broadcasting here live from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton and Franklin Counties Music and Arts Center in the beautiful downtown Kennewick. It's January 5th, 2021. Hope your year is off to an amazing start, and we've got an amazing show coming up today on Virtual Club Live. Photographers, are you ready? We got a new educational video tutorial for you. Kate is gonna break down how to do prism photography, a great way to add some cool optical effects to your next picture to help it stand out from the crowd. Plus, it's New Year's, New Year's resolutions. John here is gonna show you how to stay committed. You made a goal, now how do you follow through for the rest of the year, or however long your goal is. Plus, we've got an update on our Youth of the Year competition this year in our uh, local region. It's all virtual. We're gonna check in with some of our contestants a little later on. Plus, yes, we know the holidays are over, but it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy a nice holiday drink. We're gonna show you how to make whipped hot chocolate, a great drink that you can have while you're watching a movie by the fireplace, hanging out and enjoying the new year. But first, everybody, hope you had a, an okay 2020 and uh, welcome to 2021. Happy New Year, everybody. It's been a fun journey uh, from us uh, over at the Virtual Club over the last nine months. It's been a lot of fun and we can't wait to do more things this year. And uh, we've already gotten started, actually. Check this out. We actually have started the new year off right with some new gear. <laughs> Check this out. This is me, Cade, and Julie in the Virtual Club crew showing off some new gear, some new cameras that we got thanks to one of our uh, great supporters and board members, James Wade. James, a big shout out to you. Thank you for your amazing support in helping us get some new cameras and some new gears to take Virtual Club content to the next level here in 2021. And we're actually shooting this live show on one of our brand new cameras. So uh, I think I might need to put some extra makeup on uh, next week. But uh, thanks for all that you do, James, and we appreciate all of you watching at home. All right, right now we're gonna do an update on our previous Virtual Club challenge the holiday treat. Jesse showed you how to make these super delicious. Folks, these things were so good. The butterscotch crunch balls, an amazing holiday treat that Jesse showed us how to make. And we asked you to make your own holiday treat and send in pictures. And we loved seeing everybody's creativity throughout this process. But there can only be one winner, and we want to recognize Isabella Wingert. You are this week's Virtual Club Challenge winner. Check these out, these peppermint uh, candy pops. Love these uh, cake pops. Peppermint candy cake pops. <laughs> they look absolutely delicious. Isabella, congratulations to you. Hope you enjoyed those. You've won that $25 gift card uh, to Gray's uh, here in our community. So a big shout out to you. Thanks for participating uh, in this uh, past challenge. All right, well, it's a new year. If you're looking for a new skill or to brush up on some current skills, photography, you interested in that? Uh, Cade here has got a great video tutorial on how to make your photos stand out from others this year. It's talking about prism photography. Check it out. Hey guys, this is Cade. Today I'm going to show you how to use a prism to add cool effects to your photos. Prism photography uses a prism, which is a transparent reflective object that bends light waves into new directions. This gives a cool optical effect that can be applied to photos. All you're gonna need for this is a camera and a prism, or you can use any sort of clear reflective surface to put in front of the camera. Once you have a shot set up, all you need to do is place the prism in front of the camera lens. To get different effects, you can rotate the prism or move it to different spots on the camera lens. And remember, you can use any kind of clear reflective object in front of your camera lens. Sometimes they don't even need to be reflective. Different objects give different effects, so feel free to experiment.
We hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to share your prison photos with us, you can just go ahead and send them to our email. That's going to be it for today. We'll see you next time. All right, thanks Cade for that super creative way to take photos. An awesome way to add a little color and uh, different optical illusions and effects. Um, so send in those prism photos that you take because that is this week's virtual club challenge. We wanna show you, we wanna see your best prism photography photos. So take a picture and send it to us, virtual at greatclubs.org. We're going to kick the year, the year off right with a two-week challenge. That's right, this is a two-week challenge. The deadline to submit is Monday, January 18th, and we're going to announce the winner in two weeks on January 19th at 4 p.m. right here on Virtual Club Live. So be creative, use a prism, use something else to give it a little added extra flair or effect a really cool opportunity for you to be creative with your photos. The winner of this week's challenge, you're going to get a gift card, a $25 gift card to Dutch Bros Coffee. Uh, a great prize out there. I love uh, driving around with my coffee. All right. Well, Happy New Year again. Did you make some goals for 2021? Do you have some commitments that you're trying to uh, follow through on? John Kimsey is here to show you how to follow through on all of your New Year's resolutions, your goals, and your commitments. Check it out. Hi, my name is Jonathan Kimsey, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you three actions that can help you stay committed. The first action you can do is establish the checklist. Physically writing things down can help you visualize the tasks you need to complete for the progress. Seeing these things can help implement them into actions. The second action is finding an accountability partner. An accountability partner is someone who coaches another person to help them honor the commitment. They can also help you stay more disciplined than relying on yourself. The third and final action is to record your progress. Recording your progress can help you track your little victories and appreciate how far you have come. Taking time to reflect and appreciate your efforts can help you stay committed to making more progress. Everybody has talent, but ability takes hard work. I hope these three actions can help you to see how to stay committed. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. All right, thanks, John. Did you have a New Year's resolution that you made? Go ahead and send it to us. We wanna keep each other on track, hold each other accountable for our goals for the new year. Again, we hope 2021 uh, is an amazing year for all of you out there. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we've got an update for you on our Youth of the Year competition here at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton and Franklin Counties. It's all virtual this year. We're gonna explain when we come back. The future is uncertain for millions of young Americans facing a competitive job market. Additionally, businesses are reimagining how they work and serve their customers. How can young people prepare to meet the workforce challenges of tomorrow? They need safe spaces and positive mentorship today. That's where Boys and Girls Clubs of America come in to level the playing field and help our youth stay on the right path in the midst of change. Mentors and activities help develop essential skills like communication, creativity, and critical thinking. Club experiences spark interest in careers related to STEM, business, the arts, and more. Together with our partners, clubs empower teens to explore volunteerism, extracurriculars, and certifications in their communities. They can even access financial literacy programs, internships, and local jobs. Boys and Girls Clubs of America is developing today's youth into tomorrow's leaders, innovators, and problem solvers, ready to not only meet challenges, but exceed all expectations. Learn more about our workforce readiness programs at bgca.org workforce. 
All right, welcome back. It's time now for one of the best segments of the week. We travel to clubs across the country. This is our time to check in with some amazing things that are happening at boys and girls clubs across the USA. Our first stop, where are we going? We're going to Alabama, to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Ozark Southeast Alabama. Check this out, they did a 2020 year in review infographic, uh, 21st in 2020, absolutely amazing. Had their first ever blood drive. Uh, a Miss Preteen International volunteered at the club. New awnings and signage outside the club. They expanded their parking lot, had a new club van, a summer program, a COVID edition, a drama crew that hosted performances and zero COVID cases. Amazing work, everybody over at the Boys and Girls Club of Southeast Alabama. All right, right now we're going a little closer to home to Washington, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeast Washington. So we've seen this character before, right people? The elf on the shelf. Rudolph is uh, how they're referring to him. So after all the shenanigans that Rudolph caused at the club, uh, Rudolph left a treat for club members before he headed back to the North Pole. Maybe gave him some, uh, some cereal here. So the members there decided to write a sweet note and make him a Rudolph the Reindeer ornament. Uh, they're really gonna miss this guy. Left a, a lasting impression on all of them. So that's a lot of fun. All right, we're gonna head now over to Missouri where there's an amazing video here from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Kansas City. These are the 2021 Youth of the Year participants from their club. They had a photo shoot uh, with a professional photographer uh, in the area, Book Riddle, a uh, big shout out to them, uh, to help prepare for the Youth of the Year celebration that's happening there next month. The Youths of the Year showed off their style and class in front of the camera, and they're gonna be releasing their final images uh, pretty soon. What an amazing opportunity for them to get to go to a a really professional photo shoot. I'm sure that was a lot of fun. We've got an update for you here on our Youth of the Year competition. It's very different across the entire national organization, and we are doing everything virtual this year as well. Uh, a couple weeks ago, some of our contestants from the Boys and Girls Club over in Kennewick, the Kennewick Club there, uh, went uh, to participate in their virtual judging. Check it out. The impact that the Boys and Girls Club has had in my life um, is helped me through personal problems that I go through at home. Um, they have helped me through school, help with homework and stress that I go through, like tests. And they have been there and helped me through all that. And they have had opportunities that could help me through my future career and just been there for me. Uh, uh, my life has changed actually dramatically. It, drastically it has changed. The people, the staff here are able to motivate me to keep going in life and able to push me forward. Uh, there was a time in my life where everything got dark and I didn't feel like pushing through anymore. But coming to club was really able to, I was really able to leave that stage in my life and thanks to the staff here and kids here, I've been able to really push forward in life. All right, we absolutely love the Youth of the Year program. It's an amazing way for our teens to explain and articulate what the club means to them. It's a really powerful program that I think really changes lives and sets youth up for success as they prepare to uh, step away from the club after they graduate high school and go on to bigger and greater things. So amazing work to everybody who's particip uh, participating in the Youth of the Year uh, process this year. We're going to be doing our organizational judging on February 3rd and the organizational winner will be revealed on February 4th. So really looking forward to that. All right, we're going to switch gears now and get our dancing shoes on. Adrian is here in our latest breakdancing move series. He's going to show us how to do a coin drop. 
Check it out. Hey, it's Adrian here. I'm going to teach you a new move called the coin drop. Now I'm going to break down the coin drop. So you want to get in a comfortable position to where your right foot can stretch back. If you're going to go clockwise, counterclockwise, if you're left-handed, your left foot's going to go back. For me, right-handed. Right foot's going back. Left hand's going to come down to where your right foot is. So as soon as your left hand gets like midway, right foot's going to come up. Now when your right foot comes up, you're going to be looking down your right arm is going to swing in a punching motion. So I'm going to break it down in these three steps. So on the third step, you're just going to see me lay flat. You can go ahead and lay flat too. Eventually it's going to turn into a spin. So one feet, two hand, and then you're going to see three punch. All right. So there I didn't really have any speed, I'm going slow. You're going to want to practice going slow until you get more comfortable with this. So let's do a back angle of me doing it. Spread, left hand to my right foot, okay. Now I'm going to show you how it's done. Now I'm going to show you a variation of the coin drop. This is called a no-handed coin drop. Pretty much just take away your hands, do the same exact motions. Now at first it's going to seem real scary. Your face is pretty far from the floor, but if you get down low enough, it's not that far. So you can always go lower. I'm going to go ahead and start on my knees. You can start this way until you're getting comfortable with it. Then you're going to eventually want to take it up to your feet. So same exact stuff. As if I'm reaching for my leg, I'm just gonna roll over, hop back onto my knees. So watch. Okay. Now, once you get real comfy with that and you mastered the hand version of this move, you're gonna take your hands away and attempt it like this. So go ahead and submit your videos and pictures. We'll check them out and I'll see you next time. All right, Adrian, thanks very much for that video. I remember when I was filming this video and he did the, the drop, he did the coin drop, he did the punch thing. I was like, oh my gosh, it, was, it looks super scary. The crew here has asked me to do this right now uh, and I'm not going to, but I will do this. I'll drink some whipped hot chocolate and I hope you'll join me because coming up right after the break, we're gonna show you how to make some whipped hot chocolate. Jesse's gonna show us how to do that. We'll be right back. Today's world is really driven by technology. You see it everywhere without having the knowledge to use it. You are really missing out on a lot of opportunities the best thing about technology is creating exposure for young people to understand what's possible in both their world and in education. That's the great thing about my future. All right, welcome back. You know, the holidays may be over, but we want to reflect on an amazing uh, event that happened at our Kennewick Club a couple weeks ago, right before Christmas. The staff there worked together to put this amazing holiday light show together, and we were there to capture it. Check this out. You know, we decided to do this show uh, or this event. It's just to be, uh, mainly to bring some joy to, to, the, to the community, uh, for, especially for the kids, you know. I know we're uh, social distancing and all this crazy time. We're, we decided to do something fun and just celebrate, you know, a little bit of 
Joy. All right, yeah, get it, Charlie Brown. Big shout out to the whole crew at the Kennewick Club for putting on an amazing event. I went over there with my family a little later on in the night, had a lot of fun. Uh, police officers were giving out hot chocolate, which was amazing. Speaking of hot chocolate, everybody, that's our next video. Jesse here is gonna show you how to make whipped hot chocolate. Now, this, this hot chocolate isn't actually hot, but it's a really unique way to make that classic treat. Check it out. Hi everybody, I'm Jesse, and happy holidays. I'm so excited to share with you guys one of the most amazing hot cocoa recipes I've ever had. And it's actually not even hot. It is whipped hot chocolate. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we need to take our heavy whipping cream and we need to put five tablespoons. Now that's tablespoons, so the big capitalized ones. We're gonna need five of those into our bowl. Next, we're gonna take your favorite hot cocoa and you're gonna add two tablespoons of your hot cocoa powder into your mixing bowl. All right, using your hand mixer, you're gonna wanna whip this for about a minute to two until it is nice and fluffy consistency. So I'm using my whisk attachment and I'm gonna put it down to probably about a two. So we're just gonna set this off to the side for a second while we get our uh, chocolate milk ready. Okay, you're gonna wanna use a microwave safe bowl or cup for this part, cause we're just gonna nuke it and make it a little bit warm. But we're gonna need three quarters of a cup. Now I'm using one quarter of a cup, so I'm gonna need to use it three times to get three quarters. I'm gonna go put this in the microwave for about a minute and a half. I don't want it super, super hot, but I also want it warm enough that it will fluff really easy into the cocoa powder mix. All right, once your hot cocoa is all heat, nice and heated up, my chocolate milk, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it right into my glass. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and take my spoon and I'm going to add our whipped hot chocolate All right, last but not least, you can add some amazing toppings to this. So I'm, I love mini marshmallows in mine, but you can definitely use candy canes, sprinkles, maybe some chocolate chips, totally up to you. So let's just go ahead and add a few in. Right on top. So I hope you guys had fun. I can't wait to see your amazing creations. So make sure to follow us and post your photos up on our website and Facebook. And until next time, guys, happy holidays. Bye. All right, Jesse, thanks very much for that delicious treat, that DIY yummy snack, whipped hot chocolate. We, we got to have some after, after it was made absolutely delicious. Just a unique twist on that classic treat. All right, well, we know a lot of you are waiting for those virtual classes to return after we took a little bit of a break for the winter break. Don't we worry, they are coming back. We are resuming virtual classes in January. We know we're in January right now. So in a couple weeks, they're gonna be making their way back. We can't wait to get them started again and bring you some more uh, real-time virtual classes. So stay tuned uh, for that information. Uh, to check out everything, uh, you can follow us on our social media pages at any time. YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Just search 
virtual BGC BFC, that's Virtual Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton and Franklin Counties to see all of our videos, behind the scenes, looks at things, different pictures and all sorts of fun like that. Well, thanks for joining us today for Virtual Club Live. Hope you had a lot of fun. Happy New Year to you. To see all of our content at any time, you can go to our website, greatclubs.org slash virtual club. We'll see you next week for Virtual Club Live right here next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Until then, have a great rest of your day and a happy new year. Bye.